thing over here, guys, we can apply some product. Application tools to apply product on natural stone. Pump sprayer is perfectly fine. Take a roller and back roll as you're doing it to pick up any ponding excess. You're also working that roller sometimes to help move the product that go more deeper into the cracks and crevices. So you're trying to get it to suck in and absorb as much as possible. So in this case, I'm just going to use a sponge roller to apply. But I'm just going to do a small area. We just sat these this last week, Steve put them down, and we haven't had a chance to order them in. So we're just going to do a small little area. I'm going to use two different sealers. We have three choices when it comes to natural stone. We have the 170. 170 is the invisible. We have the 171. Now, this is water based, low VOC, LA County approved. Number two is the 171. That is the water based enhancer. The enhancer is going to help bring out the color. It is not going to give it a shine. If there's a shine on the surface, that means you've got excess you've got to remove. Everyone puts down the enhancer and say, wow, that really looks great. Then I get a phone call. Steve or Mark, one of the guys inside, get a call and say, hey, my deck is slipping. Well, that's because the guys applied the stone sealant, the 170, the 171, or the 172, which is the nano, and they didn't remove the excess. Yesterday, we did a class. I think we all talked about the hardest part about cleaning and sealing the papers is working the sand into the joint. Because the clean, it takes nothing to clean the substrate. Picking the right cleaner or the substrate to try to clean. Pressure washing when it's 100 degrees out, who cares? It gets you wet. So it's easy. Applying the sand on the pavers yesterday was the hardest thing we had to do. But applying the sealer again is easy. In this case, same thing. Cleaning the surface is simple. Picking the right prep, clean the surface. Applying the sealer is easy. You're going to pump spray it on, you're going to back roll it, and you're going to wait about 10 minutes. And this is where the work comes. Now I got to get the excess off, if there is excess. Keep in mind, we're going to do two different samples here. 170, 171, both water-based. The nano, I'm going to probably do over here on, on this. If we've got some out, we'll do it over there. The nano is going to be more for the travertine because it's a smaller particle size. All right? The smaller the particle is more for dense, dense surfaces to allow it to penetrate. So this is enhancer 170. I'm sorry, I had it backwards. I screwed up. 170 is the enhancer, 171 is the invisible. This one's going to color enhance. Usually it's one coat application. Only way you can get a second coat on there is you have to put it on. Say, if you have a pump sprayer, just imagine one guy's pump spraying and the other guy walks right back up on there when it's still damp and applies another coat with another pump sprayer. That's the only way you get two coats to react. They have to go damp on damp. You can see how it's sucking right in on this here stone. It's taking it in real well. Because it's taking it in real well, I can get a second coat on there. If you miss a spot, obviously with the enhancer, you're going to see it because it's not going to be enhanced. You can always go back and spot treat any, any holidays, as we call them, any missed spots. On the invisible, you won't be able to see it when it dries. The only way you can see if you missed a spot is apply water to it. And if it doesn't repel, then you got You know you missed that area, so you can reapply that area when it dries. Key thing to remember: these have to go on dry. Meaning you can't pressure wash and seal typically the same day, unless it's the middle of summer. You're in a hot climate like we are right here in, in, in near Tampa. Uh, COVID nineteen hot spot. You know, we're right there, the the leaders of of all that. So again, one coat or two coats if it'll take it. Damp on damp but it has to go on dry, cannot be wet. That means if you pressure wash it today, and it's a comfortable nine, and there's concrete underneath, you may have to go out there with blowers and treat the area by getting it dry. Some guys will use those squirrel cages like carpet dryers. Other guys will take and hook up a, a heat torch, like a roofing torch, hooks up to a barbecue tank, 
you take that and you lightly dust the surface. Now, keep in mind, when you're using a torch, you're trying to draw the moisture out. But do not get too close to the substrate because you don't want the substrate to pop. If you've got a house that has wood siding or vinyl siding, don't get too close to the wall because you're going to affect the surface. So I have an aluminum shield, something with a handle that you can hold up to the edge and you can get close at that point. So it's like a hot hair dryer trying to warm up the surface and pull up the moisture. See, that's just sucking it right up. Now back here, I'm gonna do the invisible. Now this is gonna sit on the substrate for about 10 minutes. In about 10 minutes, if this still has this shine over here, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna take a, uh, a towel wrapped around a broom, some rubber bands, and I'm gonna start wiping it down with towels and or a microfiber mop to remove any excess. Again, natural stone, you can see it's penetrating pretty good. Only got a little bit over here, over here. I'm gonna wait about 10, 15 minutes, that's still there. I'm gonna take my towel, I'm gonna wipe that off. Visible? Yeah, I'll get the pump clear. Visible, guys, is probably the easiest. That is, is that in there? The invisible is the easiest to work with. It doesn't color enhance, so keep in mind, if somebody wants color enhancement, they've got to go with the, with the enhancer version, the nano or the water-based. But this one requires more buffing and, and removal of excess versus the invisible. The invisible, you put it down, 20 minutes later it dries, you put water on it, it looks like rain off a windshield. It becomes that hydrophobic that quick. Tell it's a little hot out here today. This is the second t shirt already. Now it's going to enhance when it's wet. When we come back to this in about 15 minutes, it'll be dry. That's it, guys. This is almost dry enough now that I can take the towel and wipe off the excess. So, the reason why you're doing this is to protect the stone from mold, algae growth, and the sun deteriorating the surface, where it's just going to make it that much easier to maintain and keep clean. This is what I'm talking about the excess, guys. Again, any excess on there, just take something like this. and remove it. And you're gonna note this substrate sucked it right in, all right? This is coming in pretty quick too, but in about 10 minutes, we'll come back to that. Now I'm gonna go over to travertine next. The travertine can use the same sealers, but it's gonna go on a lot different because again, it's dense and it's not gonna absorb. So this is where you're gonna have to work a little harder on the application. This will be the invisible. Again, simple, round and around, round and around. You're just trying to get a nice, generous coat. Coverage will vary. Coverage on that flagstone that we just did over here, it's gonna be around 100 to maybe 150 square foot per gallon. On travertine, I'm gonna probably get two to 300 square foot per gallon. It's basically gonna double the amount of coverage because that's not gonna penetrate as much as the natural stone did, all right? Now this again is the invisible, the enhancer. I'll just take the cigar roller over here. One. Dry one, yes, sir. And this is the Enhancer Nano. This is the 172. Pump spray it on, and then back roll it. This is why we, when we prep this, the etching clean is very important because this is very smooth, natural calcium, cal calcium carbonate stone, travertine, and it does not like to absorb it in. So by prepping it with the etching clean, it's gonna make this sucker go in deeper, the deeper it goes in, the more it's gonna impregnate. That kind of made a funny thing. Deeper impregnate. I don't know. I don't know whoever came up with that, but they're pretty brilliant. Again, I'm 
travertine, we find most of the cases, it's only a one coat application. You can typically not get a second coat out here. But again, pump spray and around and around circular motion, motion at a rate around 250, 300, maybe even a little bit more. It's going to vary depending on how etched the travertine is. And then you're going to come back and just back roll it in. Pick up any excess that gets down these cracks and crevices, these stones, these little holes, even it out. You let it sit 10 to 15 minutes. You start getting into one. If, if you wait 20, 30 minutes, what's going to be is it's going to start setting up on the surface and it's going to get harder to remove the excess. I always tell everybody when they put down the, the, the enhancer, especially the enhancer water based and the nano, is wait about 10, 15 minutes and then start taking your microfiber or your broom wrapped with a towel around the bottom of it with a rubber band, start buffing off the excess. If you wait an hour, it's going to be that much harder to get off the excess. If you wait the next day, it's going to be almost impossible to get the excess off unless you get a floor buffer with a scrubbing pad. The best way to describe these impregnators, again, they react. They become part of the structure. They become part of it. If they don't go in, the leftover excess is what it is. So it's like wax in a car. If you wax the car, if you wait 10 minutes and take the wax off, it comes off pretty easy. If you wait a half an hour, it's a little bit harder to get off, especially in the sun and the heat. If you wait till the next day, you gotta get a, a mechanical buffer with rubbing compound. It's no different than this. So application is easy. Just remember, 10 to 15 minutes, come back and remove the excess. But again, you'd wait about 10 to 15 minutes. You can see how it's starting to suck it in. That's what you want to do. So the longer it can suck in, the better it's going to have a chance to penetrate deeply and last longer. That's the longevity. Right? So he's going to go ahead and just hit it anyways just to kind of show you. Again, in a class, we're just kind of going kind of quickly so we're not keeping you in suspense. It's like watching paint dry. Invisible. The enhancer, you've got to come back and remove the excess. This one will typically just dry on its own without having to worry about the excess. Now, if I got a big ponding area like in here, then obviously I want to back roll that. So any areas that hold a lot of product, just back roll, all right? That's pretty much it, guys, for today. I'm going to kind of go over an overview. Did I miss something?